this video is on dangerous layer of scalp so which layer is the dangerous layer of scalp and why that layer is known as dangerous layer of the scalp so let us first see the five layers of the scalp i have made a detailed video about the different layers of scalp i'll put the link of that video in the dis description box of this video so let us see what are the five layers from superficial to deep these are the first one is the skin then we have the superficial fascia or you can also call it connective tissue the third layer is the aponeurosis epicranial aponeurosis along with which muscle the occipito frontalis muscle and then we have the fourth layer is the loose areolar tissue and the last layer is the pericranium which is nothing but periosteum of cranial bones which form the skull cap or the vault now deep to the scalp here we can see these are the cranial bones we can see here and then after that we enter the cranial cavity in the cranial cavity we can see here the brain is located here and is covered by meninges the outermost meninges meninges is known as dura mater which has got two layers you can see this green layer this is the dura mater the outer layer which is lining the cranial bones here this is known as the endosteal layer and the inner one is known as meningeal layer now here we can see a venous channel which is located here this is a dural venous sinus and because this is in the midline there uh, just next to the skull cap so this is the superior sagittal sinus so keeping this in view let us see now which layer is known as the dangerous layer of scalp so it is the fourth layer that is known as dangerous layer of the scalp and this layer is located here we can see that now here as the name suggest it is a loosely arranged form of connective tissue is there and this actually acts as a potential space if there is any infection the pus can get collected here if there is injury or cut off the blood vessels then the blood can also accumulate here so which layer is the dangerous layer of scalp it is the fourth layer and what is the name of that layer the name is loose areolar tissue now let us see why this is known as a uh, dangerous layer of scalp why we would call something dangerous we will call something dangerous only if that is responsible for causing some serious health problem so what happens in this case suppose there is some infection here in the scalp and that is carried to the cranial cavity inside here now that infection can involve meninges and the brain also so that will be uh, that will cause a serious health problem so let us see how this infection can be carried from the scalp to the cranial cavity now here you can see there is a vein and this vein is known as emissary vein this vein passes through this fourth layer that is the loose areolar tissue layer now what are emissary veins emissary veins are those veins which connect the extra cranial veins with the intracranial dural venous sinuses and they don't have valves right so infection can travel from extra cranial regions to the cranial cavity let us see how this emissary vein uh, connects the scalp of the vein with the dural venous sinus so here what we have is in the second layer we have the veins of the scalp and inside the cranial cavity we have this dural venous sinus the superior sagittal sinus can be seen and these two are connected via emissary vein so therefore if there is any infection here in the scalp that will be carried via the emissary vein to dural venous sinus and this can then lead to meningitis and it can also affect the brain tissue also so that's why the fourth layer is known as the dangerous layer of the scalp because infection from scalp may travel along emissary veins from the scalp to the dural venous sinus which can lead to meningitis and which can involve the brain tissue that's why the fourth layer is the dangerous layer of the scalp so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want 
the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again